Alrighty guys, we are here in the shed. Guess who's here? We have ourselves Phoenix Resale. Yeah. And we got Chris, Rip, and Lance, Lance. for hey. Retroware. What's going on? Ba back in the day, alright here. We got actually Caleb on the podcast. How you feel, man? Uh, Caleb, you're here. Yeah, thanks, Caleb. Appreciate uh, you answering that one. Dude, <laughs> rule number one, don't ever talk over me. <laughs> I'm sorry, this is my first podcast ever. I've been thinking about this for a year. I'm so nervous. How's it feel to be here? Boy, I I feel like I've been thinking about this day for the last... I'll tell you this. Retro Rick might be the, your number one channel fan, but I think I am the number one podcast fan. I have listened to every single episode of this show all the way through. I actually was nice. keeping track of some of your worst takes ever. Maybe we'll get to that. Maybe we won't. But I write them down. Every time Riff says something stupid, I get I'm a text. like, all right, I need to, I'm going to bring this up to him live. I will say you have been supporting the podcast as since day one. You've Thank always you. been very talkative yeah, to me about it. That. So. Thank you. Always the tone of surprise with you. Yes. You know, I'm always surprised because the reality of why you're here is everybody knows you're a scumbag. <laughs> that is the main thing I'm known for. All right, so it obviously started, started with my parents, and now it's just everyone. So obviously I'm joking. Obviously we're joking. <laughs> but okay, uh, the big thing on the internet: you've done videos confronting these people, talking to people, business owners, brutal reality. You're a reseller. Some people love you to death, mm -hmm. and for some reason or other, I want to hear from you. There's a large amount of people who hate you to death. You've quickly become kind of the target of collecting channels, flipping channels, maybe both even, justified or not, which we'll get into. Uh -huh. I want to hear just your take in general to all of the reaction to you kind of being the hated guy within that world. Yeah, it's interesting that you say that. I've been grappling with that more recently of just like the reality of <laughs> I made a video recently called why is my youtube channel so widely hated mm. because i have been realizing more recently uh from other people in the space man like my channel seems to get more of it the, like i kind of the channel grew and i kind of thought like this is just part of it but it seems like it's a bit more a part of it for me than maybe even the average youtube channel um as for why i guess they're just good judges of character and they see right through me. Do I don't think so. <laughs> I disagree with that. And I'm just going to vouch for you as a human being. And I've known you. You know, we've hung out a few times. You genuinely are a really good guy. Well, thank you, man. You are. I'm glad so I have you It's fooled. unfortunate that people say that. And I watched some of you, you have the videos that you put out. And I was like, dang, it, it, it was very heartfelt listening to you talk about that. Because mm. knowing you as a person, I'm like, dang, you're such a good guy. It sucks that you're getting hate like that. So. Well, I appreciate that. I would say that one he, thing that his like benefits his channel. He handles it very well. What were you gonna say, Lance? Lance? No, I was just gonna say you know because we've had Caleb at uh, Retro World before. One of the easiest guests to work with. <laughs> just gets back to you. He's very professional. Yeah, you well, know, you guys put on a great show. We don't know each show. other personally too well, but. What I do know, is and as a, a very, fellow very good guy. expo owner now, thank yeah. God because it is very nice to have someone who's very easy to work with. Yeah. Um, a question I wanted to ask you is: when you you know feel the hate, read the hate, whatever, is there a percentage of it where you ever feel like, oh shoot, they're actually maybe kind of right on that? Versus the number of people, I I have a theory of why I believe people hate you for sure. Yeah. So, <laughs> well, we'll get to th it. Thanks for that. I appreciate it. <laughs> but I would say previously, because my stance on this has changed a lot recently in the last like year or so, I've actually gone from like continuing to try to like read the comments and stay as like in touch with like the good and the bad feedback as possible to like now I, I just take the advice that everyone has always given me, which is just ignore it. Um, that does come at a cost because you do lose some of that contact with the community that made you. Um, but what I've realized is over the course of growing a channel, my thought going into it was that, okay, as the channel grows, like pretty much proportionate to the channel growth, the hate is going to grow. Mm. But I was totally wrong. What has actually been the case is like that graph has not been linear. Like as the channel grows, the hate grows. It's actually been more exponential. So like it shoots up. The, not just the number of haters grows, but the ratio of good to bad gets worse over time. And, and I, I did see you talk about that and even thought about it in my mind because I used to think, you know, that was going to happen, right? To mm -hmm. someone like us, let's say even Pixel Game Squad, like, okay, as we grow, hate's going to grow at some level with it, right? Nothing exponential. Yeah. And when I was listening to your video of you talking about that, kind of how your the hate has kind of like rocketed up 
along with the channel, mm -hmm. I feel like it was shockingly like high, right? To a level to where it felt like as someone who's on YouTube sees other channels, I'm like, that is shocking the amount. But I per I personally believe, like I've again been on YouTube forever, 12 years, different people helping channels. I think that you're just too honest. Hmm. And I feel like every YouTuber, and I hate to say it, but it's almost a reality, is there's some falsehood that goes into every channel, whether it's a little bit of character or a little bit of personality or a little bit of like, I don't, don't want to say that on camera. Let me just keep this to the side. Or, you know, even like guys like us, nothing major that we're hiding, but maybe just little things like, ah, maybe cut that part because it might make us look a little bad, even though it wasn't a big deal. Mm. But I feel like you're the only one I've ever met on YouTube, especially being your editor, where you're like, mm, whatever, put it all in. Like, you don't yeah. tell me, oh, cut that. That might look bad. That might make me look a certain way. You're like, that's just the truth. That is just the truth because I guarantee you 80% of the people at conventions who are buying stuff, whether they're gonna play the game or flip it, whatever, they don't need to be transparent, nor are they filming it about what they're doing with it. But I just think you're so honest about it that people are like, why are you telling them that you're gonna flip it? They hate that. Mm -hmm. But it's just you being honest about what you're doing. And the top, the, one of the main reasons I would think you get so much hate is because it's towards being a reseller, right? Mm -hmm. Like, do you feel like you've gotten more hate now that you're reselling more with your YouTube channel. For sure. So you've noticed probably more, For sure. it, right? And obviously I've been a reseller since day one. I could speak to the amount of hate that I got when I first opened my store. Like it's always been there. People just do not like resellers. Some people do not. So I think what you're referring to is like the honesty. And I was surprised when your channel came out. I remember watching it for the first time and being like, whoa kind of like i was like whoa that's like a different <laughs> approach to reselling because you were so direct with it yeah and i'd been a reseller for years and i was even like oh like i'm surprised you would go made that. you uncomfortable no not me because i dealt with all that stuff i was like oh this is like right in my my ballpark i love this stuff it was nice to hear from my perspective somebody it was refreshing almost to be like oh i love this you're actually open about what we do mm -hmm. well again because you're not even just saying like we're reselling it like you'll be honest like they'll be like well are you sure you want it well you're like ah, let me pull out the number nope i need 10 percent less than that like that's what i get and it's like it's just not even just honest but it's like the detailed honesty. it's the details yeah. of it right like as myself as a reseller like if people would like as a store owner like i've kind of always hidden like what my margins are and what i'm making yeah. and what i'm paying for people because when people hear wait you paid that much and then you sold it for that oh i don't like you now you ripped that person off mm -hmm. and so uh, as a business owner i would kind of hide some of that stuff you know like not put it out there versus you were like boom here it is analytically yeah well it it definitely does come at a cost i'm glad to hear you guys say that because actually one of uh spencer my only employee and i have been trying to crystallize i'm the, sitting right here dude the, <laughs> don't i kind of count as an employee <laughs> uh, you're, you're like a hobby you're a halfling <laughs> um, the way we treat curtis's mom <laughs> <yo>. <laughs> we've been we've been trying to crystallize the business's core values this last year and one of them is radical honesty mm. um and so i'm glad to hear that that has been something that's come through on the channel, but you're right that it comes at a cost because especially when you're talking to people that aren't as business minded, you run a big risk of things getting lost in translation. Like if you are in your store and someone sees you offering 30% of market value for a game that you know is gonna sit forever, right? And that you can't feasibly pay more because you've got all the overhead and the expenses and the employees and it's gotta be cleaned and tested. And there's all the work that goes into it. The average person might not know that. So when you're radically honest and you say, hey, this is a hundred dollar game, I'll give you 30 bucks. Some of that might get lost and maybe that's where uh, part of the hate comes from. Uh, but I, I mean, your guess is as good as mine. I think part of it also is like as the channel has grown and as any channel grows, you lose underdog status. Right. So the more successful you become, one thing I heard the, in the last couple of weeks is like when you start out and you're the underdog, you remind people of their dreams, mm. right? But the more successful you get, you start to remind them that they gave up on them. It's interesting too, like 
he has, I, I guess a good question for you, Lance, if you don't know, Lance is one of the founders of RetroWare or the founder. How's that? Yeah. So I founded uh, RetroWare with uh, John D'Elia. Yep. And we don't, we don't own the name anymore. We own all our, all our content, but mm. yeah, it was a long time ago now. <laughs> you guys were some of the more popular YouTubers back in guy. When was this? 2010? Yeah. 2008, 2009. So wow. Like early so days. So early. Yeah. Were you guys, when you guys grew, because you guys were some of the bigger dogs within the retro world as well. Was like hate comment something you would see as often, or were you guys kind of beloved because you were holding games as strictly the history of games, or it, was it? You know, it's it's kind of funny because I was going to say this about Caleb stuff, and you know, as you grow, you get more comments and good and bad. <clears throat> Just reviews overall, whether it's YouTube, whether it's Google, a restaurant, whatever. For everybody who likes something they're probably less like to comment on it than somebody who hates something. Mm -hmm. True. So you're going to get like all this hate because they're, they're angry. They're, they don't like it, but there's probably a thousand people to the 50 that didn't like it, that, that really did like it. So that's probably why you, as your audience grew, you, you saw more, more hate and you got to, excuse my voice, paralyzed vocal cord things going on. But, um, you know, and, and as far as me, that like, I'm, I'm glad that you don't let it bother you because it, it actually really bothered me. Mm. And uh, as I as I got we got bigger and stuff, more of that came and kind of affected me a while. And then it came to the I came to that conclusion eventually. And uh, yeah, you know. So it, is that why you ultimately stopped doing YouTube videos? Well, was it because it, of that? It's, it's actually very you know it was very hard for me to to do a lot of audio. Uh, again, paralyzed vocal cord. I get winded easily and all that kind of stuff. So. Um, and it, you know, at the same time I just had kids, mm. you know, John was, went to, uh, to business school and we couldn't contribute as much as we wanted to. And our, you know, our lives just kind of diverted and got into other things like the expo and, uh, decided to go in that direction. So, well, I'm glad to hear you say that because if I give the impression that it doesn't get to me, which I probably do because, uh, I hater joke Hank. about it a lot. Hater oh, yeah, ha the Hater segment. Hank bit. Hater Hank. Dude. Yeah. My favorite. Yeah, so for the longest time, the my strategy was to read the comments and then try to embrace them by, like, making jokes of them. Um, so it probably gave the impression that it doesn't really get to me, but, like, it's almost impossible for it not to. Mm, like I if you're so. if you're really honest, like there are times when you'll read a comment and you'll find yourself like thinking about it as you're laying in bed. Especially mm. when and yeah. the worst ones for me are when you see multiple people calling you out for something that is the opposite of who you want to be. Right. Mm. So like when people accuse me of like hiding stuff, right? Or being false or shifty or like that really gets to me because I'm so much about like I'm trying to like really put myself out there and not hide stuff, hide less than most people do. And so when people accuse me of like concealing information or like, you know, uh, like cheating someone or things like that. And especially if that's a common, uh, comment on a certain video that like really, uh, that has the potential to get into my brain and really it's hard not to ask yourself, man, like, am I really seeing myself rightly here? Like, is there something to this? Like, why are so many other people mm -hmm. seeing me in a way that is in direct contact contrast to how I want to see myself? I have another question, but I'll let you we, go first. We did an episode on here where we brought up like, uh, hate comments. It was, and yeah. there was, we one, do have some comments coming for Caleb. Just yeah, and, I don't, <laughs> uh -oh. and I tend to like, when we do the podcast, I don't go in and read the comments myself anymore. Mm. Um, because I, I personally, it, it affects me too. Yeah. And like, even that one comment that we read, I forget what it was. It was like, I just can't stand Chris. Is he oh, so unlikable or something yeah. like that? <laughs> like it was in my head for days. Yeah. And I had told Blake, I was like, Blake was like, here, can I, can I read you this comment? And I was like, I don't know if I want to hear it. And then he was like, oh, you just read it out. And I'm like, and I told him two yeah. days later, I'm like, that's all I've been thinking about now. The other day, two days. Uh, yeah. Mort texted me and he's like, Hey, have you heard of this? I can't literally can't remember. Have you heard of this blank guy? He's like doing videos hating on us. And my to guard myself, my literal response to Mort was, Nope, and I do not care. Do not share the link. Yeah, I'd don't rather share just a not screenshot. Know. I want to know nothing. Yep. Yeah. Nothing. And I moved on and guess what? It didn't affect me because I just moved on. Now my question to you, uh, I feel like the the YouTube would kill us if I didn't ask about this. All right. This is just I have to ask. I'm ready. GameCube Gambit. Yes. Do you, I, that's, I think that's where your, like a lot of your hate came from. Yeah, there's reseller stuff, but I, I know a lot of the community started hating on you. If you guys aren't aware, GameCube Gambit did a whole series collecting his favorite GameCube games. Mm -hmm. Then to the internet, 
you immediately sold your whole collection. Mm-hmm. Maybe clarify what happened if you felt like you were disingenuous or yeah. if you felt like you're honest or if people missed it. Yeah, so uh, the background of that is I did this series collecting, like the whole premise of the GameCube Gambit series was I am building my childhood dream GameCube collection that I never got a chance to have as a kid because I didn't own a GameCube. So I had a list of 60 or so games that I really wanted to get, and I spent like a year doing it, Mm -hmm. um, building up this collection, and I didn't realize um, like how much it would catch on. Right, because I had never done a collecting series up until that point. It had been just reselling content. Like, here's what I'm buying. I feel like here's that's kind of what skyrocketed it. you into a little more fame. That series. Yeah, it was definitely broader appeal than what I had been doing before. Um, and then got to the end of the series and made a video about uh, that. I will say I shot myself in the foot a little bit how I packaged it. Right, because mm-hmm. uh, what I was doing is going through all of the games that I had gotten in that series. I had ended up with over a hundred games a lot of which were never on the list in the first place, and some of which I had played and realized, oh, I actually don't want. So once the series was finally done, I got to a moment where I was like, all right, I need to be critical about what games I want to curate for my permanent collection, and then just sell off the rest. But I made a video that was called Selling My GameCube Collection. Yes, notorious. Uh, yeah, or something like that, that blew up for, it, it was on the second channel, blew up for the second channel, and people were furious. I had no idea could not have anticipated how mad people were about it. And I think there are two reasons for it. One is there was already kind of a sentiment of like, Caleb's a fake gamer. Mm -hmm. He's like pretending to be into collecting for views, right? Or gaming because like we all know he's really mostly about the money because that's what the channel had already always been about. It's called Phoenix Resale. You know, that's what I'm about. So there was always this underlying sentiment that like maybe this guy's not for real. And then to have that video come out Uh, I think a lot of people felt really betrayed by it. And for a while, I was really defensive about that. I was like, guys, like, we are grown men. Let's not care so much about what other grown men do with their possessions. And every time I start to tell Erica about, like, why people are pissed about this, she just gives me the weirdest look like, what are you talking about? (laughs) How do people actually care about this? But the longer I've thought about it, the more I've realized, like, I'm I'm kind of flattered in a way that people are so upset by it because it means that in the first place, people cared. And... I think that is in, in at least that limited sense, it speaks well of like what we did with those videos and the storytelling and like the journey that we took people yeah, on. Good. And I'm grateful that, that people liked the series in that way. Um, where I would disagree with a lot of people is one, a lot of people don't realize that I didn't sell the whole thing. Like I sold like 40% yeah. of the games that I had and it was only the, like, I think that's a really healthy process that all collectors should go you through. You sold like 40%? Yeah. So this is, here's a quick interesting little thing to point out while we're talking about this is Gabo just recently collected his NES set. Mm. All of them. Whole set. Gabo's selling like <gasps> 75%. How dare he. But he's not. And, and not again, to you. <laughs> and, and no hate. No <laughs> hate, right? Gabo just was on last podcast. Uh-huh. He is getting no hate for it. Isn't that interesting that he's that selling is. more off than you did, but I don't think he's packaging it the way right. that you are. Well, he's smart not to make a video saying, selling NES whole collection. Although, although <laughs> yeah. people haven't seen it yet, I made a video buying 100 NES collection games from Gabo. Uh-oh. And when that video drops, I'm curious if Gabo is going to get the same flag. I bet people will be pretty supportive because it's like collector to collector, yeah. like, see that. you well, know, maybe a little bit less betrayal there. I don't know. I mean, do you guys, th- like, should I have done it differently? Do you think that's something that collectors should do? Like, and you gave away Pokemon Box. Yeah. A $1,600 game. Yeah. I, it, it's it's like I find myself because ever since I became, you know, your editor, you know, uh-huh. I'm like, I'm part of the team. I'm part of the ecosystem of the channel. I would buy, like, I don't get upset by comments much, but I would get more upset when people came at you and your comments. Like, <laughs> he has so many still. He gave away Pokemon Box. Like, how dare you? And I'm like, in my head, I'm like, why am I arguing for him? Well, I, well, do you consider yourself a collector still? <laughs> That's an interesting question because like over my lifetime on YouTube, I've like desired to associate with being a gamer and being a collector less and less because of it seems like those communities just really don't want me. But isn't that a sad thing to think about? And even Curtis and I the other day were having this conversation. It's like, it's crazy. I feel like the only our people, right? The people we love the most are the people who, like, we were talking about, like, even at dinner, it's like, why is it that in the video game scene, like, gatekeeping is so 
heavy. It's yeah. really it's prevalent. so we've, heavy. We've talked about this many, several times on the podcast, and it's been discussed a lot. Is like, if you can you be a collector and a reseller? Mm. In my opinion, is absolutely you can. I think I, there's a lot that say no. So maybe there are, but in my opinion, like if you're collecting things and you're selling things and buying things, or even if you make it turn it into your livelihood, like I have, like I'm still a collector at heart. Yeah. I might resell as well. So like if you, but to me, you sound like a collector, like you saved some of your collection. Like, do you game? I assume you're a gamer too, right? Do you play here's, games? Here's the thing that I don't know if I've ever talked about before, but I would put money on I probably game twice as much yep. as Riff and Rick combined. Yep. So you're a gamer. And I will say you're correct. So, you're so correct. I mean these guys are crazy machines and they don't have time for that. But it doesn't make you less of a gamer, I wouldn't say. No, not at all. But I've beaten four NES games. You can literally month, play like. the same game over and over and still be a gamer. To yes. Me. So well, what the thing that I see and cuz I I would like trying to define why does Gabo not get hate and you get hate. What I interpret it as is, well, first of all, the reason I ask you those questions is in my mind, you are a collector and you are a gamer. Like you're in the community, right? You resell, but maybe the reason you've gotten hate is because people don't realize that you are like a collector and gamer. Mm. They look at you as like, you are just, what, what I think people don't like in the collecting industry, we're not industry, uh, mar market or group, community. right? Community, thank you, is when, People come in that are strictly just resellers, mm. and we've what what I've always said is I never understood it why I got hate when I originally when I opened my stores was I was like wait I'm in this community I love these games I love Nintendo games I love collecting and I found over the years I've gotten less and less hate as I've done things like the expo and like I'm always like well we're giving back to the community trying to be involved in the community and doing yeah. stuff when I got the most hate was when I first opened my stores and people were like they didn't know who I was and they're like you're just a reseller coming in to resell our hobby. And people Not just, just a reseller, a dirty, dirty yes, reseller. <laughs> so, and I embraced it for a while. Remember, there was a period of time, like eight years ago, where we it was myself and a few other video game store owners. We were calling ourselves dirty resellers. There were shirts made and yes, everything. Come back. Yeah, we just started embracing it. We were like, oh shoot, all right, we, we, we'll, we'll be that if that's what you want us to be. So interesting is recently the Game Chasers put out a podcast, and in they even mentioned us in the podcast, uh, which was nice of them. But in my head, I was like, if you guys would have put this video out years ago it was basically them being like we know that we kind of like created this persona even though they believed it to an extent of like resellers are bad they kind of catered to that mindset of early youtube like oh, another reseller another reseller but they were saying even in the video that it wasn't even that intense it was more of a thing you're kind of doing for youtube us oh, reseller but really it was more just a way of youtube back then and they were like I wish we were kind of more open about this. It wasn't actually like we hate resellers. And well, because that was, sorry, that was the like mentality back then. And this is goes back to the retroware days when you guys, like all, when you guys were making videos and the team that you were involved with, not, not just you guys, but YouTube in general. And even when you guys had NES Pursuit, yeah, it was all collecting, 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 collecting. Oh. Yeah. And I don't know who the, f you might have been one of the first people. That <laughs> JHMDF <laughs> might have been one of the first more popular ones. Yeah, that all of a sudden were like, Oh, that's there's all these collecting videos, but here's reselling as well, which yeah. is Scott Squatch, by the way, if you're wondering. You know, okay. What's kind of weird though is like there's definitely like a relationship between collector and, and reseller to an extent. I, I at least I think because <clears throat> all of us probably all of us who like I, I don't sell games at all, by the way. Um, but I would think anybody who not everybody, but most people who do sell games had a love for it at one point. Mm -hmm. And oh, yeah. they probably were collectors and, and game players and stuff like that. You think so like those as, as larger you mature, things, though, yeah. you know, like yeah, maybe I can make a profit. And so it's like there's still the love there. Yeah. yeah. Like I go to Chris's store today and, the, you know, I'm not going to. He, he just had this really big collection of, of personal stuff that. He's not selling. Yeah, those I was are, pointing out all thing. my comics and personal yeah. stuff. I didn't want to say anything. <laughs> yeah, a lot. Uh, but yeah. And that's where my point is: is that I, you can be both, and you are both. I just maybe it's somehow lost Caleb, its root. That's what you are. In this room, we accept you. Yeah, we Aww. do. <laughs> that's we so do. nice. Wait, speaking of accepting, Curtis has been trying so hard. Yeah, to yeah. Get yeah. Out no, yeah. Like, I, was, I was only <laughs> trying to just get out of the fact that like most of these channels that pretty much were inspired by reselling. Like TV shows, mm -hmm. everybody would look at mm -hmm. American Pickers like, oh, they're reviving, they're reviving. But realistically, they had a storefront selling that stuff that they found. Yep. 
Mm. You know what I mean? They Game used... chasers say that that was the reason yeah. they made what they did is because they wanted to be an American Pickers. With yeah, and those guys aren't hated. Jeez, everybody no. loves those oh, guys. I love, we love Mike them. Wolf, to this day, is the number one guest I want ever. I, I will say they one... did start off, they weren't selling things technically. They, yeah. were, they were just collecting for themselves. Yeah. But, but eventually yeah. it gets too much. But That's another fun. point, yeah. though, when you listen to them talk and why I think they are loved is because Frank and Mike both are collectors. They talk Big about time. their collection. Oh, yeah. Yeah. The and, they, yeah. and so that, to me, is the main difference is like they're loved they're resellers you're you're a reseller now i'm gonna say you're a reseller but you're <laughs> oh, also no. a collector i've been outed <laughs> you're a reseller i'm a reseller but maybe you just heart, didn't talk about collectors. your collecting as much during i think that, that that's or your love missing. for games here's the thing here's where i might differ from a lot of people and where some people might go from hey i kind of like this guy to actually you know what screw caleb is i actually don't believe that the collecting hobby or the gaming hobby is any more virtuous than reselling mm. So one opinion that I hear a lot is like, it, you're kind of cool, you're okay, as long as you do have a genuine love for the stuff. And I actually wouldn't necessarily agree. I would say that like as a business owner, like number one, flipping is just as legitimate of a hobby as collecting. Like I feel a fantastic high when I'm finding like a great game that I've been looking for that's rare and I feel that great high when I'm finding something great to flip that I can use to, you know, pay off debt or support my family. Like I think those are both really great things and I don't think that you to me you don't earn any more brownie points for like having a love for the stuff. Like yeah. when I go to the mechanic I don't ask, are you really passionate about my engine? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's that's a, such I, a good I just statement. ask, like, are you doing a good job for a good price? And that's what I make my decision based off of. Not, But, like, when you get into the collectibles world, there's this sense that people have of, I don't want to say entitlement, because I, I think it comes from a good place of, like, you're not, you have to earn the right to make money on this stuff. Uh outside of just being a good business person. Uh, and that's where I'd probably, like I hear people talking about that a lot with me and I wanna, I try to reject the urge to justify myself by saying, no guys, I really do but like I am games. a gamer. I really yeah, am a collector, I love, I, I love gaming. Like, cause I just kind of want to be a voice for the flipping community that like, flipping itself is a cool thing to be into. I mean, in the reality too, and it's like, we can argue and try to pick reasons why this and that, your channel is called Phoenix Resale from day one. Yeah. yeah. Like it's a resale channel through and through. Like if you're coming there to justify and be like, dude, you're not even a gamer. It's like, I am a resale channel from day one. You know, if, if the love for games happens to be on there also, great. Mm. And I respect that opinion that you have too. That's the one thing that I think when when I started getting hate early on, I was like, how do I curb this? Like, mm -hmm. I don't want to be hated like that. And that the one way, it wasn't like it was fake. I mean, I always was a collector and a gamer. It was just to like show like, this, I'm one of you guys too. What, so whether you choose to do that or not, sounds like, you know, you, could, you don't have to. Well, and I think it it's does. also, it's an awesome thing that this is a space where almost all the people who are in this business do it because they love it. Like nobody gets into video game, almost no one gets into video games like just because they think it's the most optimal industry because it's super competitive, right? Like it's not something you would just go into if you don't also like kind of feel a little extra happy when yeah. you have a shelf full of N64 games that you're selling rather than a shelf full of door hinges, Yeah, you know? And I'm definitely in that. I think almost everyone feels that way. And I think that's a, a really cool thing about the hobby. I just, I wouldn't like disparage someone if they're like, I just really love this as a side hustle and like, my enjoyment in this is the financial gain that I and my family get. Uh, and like, I love the business side of it and that's where I get my enjoyment. I'm, I'm like, that's really cool too. I agree with that too. Yeah, there is nothing wrong with that. But in the community there is. It is viewed as not. It's not, but there's still that sentiment right. in the community. Yeah. Which is, I think it's just, and I don't think it will ever be fixed. I think it's an ever long battle i, I don't almost think i don't i i don't know though because we if you look at other markets like sorry curtis get away curtis hold on yeah. stay your corner if, <laughs> if you look at like comic books right like i i go back to comic books a lot because it's been around for a hundred years it's one of the longest running collectibles right like in the comic book world i do not see the kind of hate towards people that sell in comics and a lot of people do that just as like their financial gain mm -hmm. and it doesn't seem to be as apparent there versus like uh newer collectibles 
Mar uh, communities like especially like the VHS market or I keep saying market but community like don't view that very well so the co comics it's like disappeared over a long span of time mm. I think eventually with video games it might go by the wayside too where like oh I'm just a grader of games I just buy games and I grade them that's what I do and, Maybe. and a lot of people a lot do of that, that with comics and nobody cares and I think a lot of that so, has to do yeah. with the, the the types of social media that they have you know like especially what's prevalent on YouTube video games I mean sure there's there's VHS collectors on YouTube and stuff like that, but like video games is just such a big it's format on huge, YouTube that it, huge. it's amplified, and you have this mix mash of opinions. That yeah, think think of how many Let's Play channels there are versus Let's Read. You know, right, <laughs> right, right. right. <laughs> there's a good example. My know? last question was going to be um, like, do you ever think this uh, stigma of hate towards you will ever change on your channel? Uh, probably not. Uh, although I will say like recently I've been pivoting my content to be, business. yeah, much more business focused. And so I would expect that as all of the collector crowd just organically loses interest, yeah. uh, and the niche kind of gets a little bit tighter, right? Like business people are generally going to like business videos a little bit more. You could see like maybe my ratio will be better, but at this point I won't necessarily notice cause I'm not reading it anymore. Yeah. Um, yeah. So we'll see, but I don't, uh, I, th I think if I had any advice to fellow creators, like I wouldn't necessarily um, tailor what you want to make based on what will get you the least hate. Um, I would just be really careful the um, sources of feedback that you allow into your mind. Like right now in this room, I'm feeling great about what I do. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Like with four other flesh and blood dudes, like I, I'm feeling, I'm on top of the world. Call and out the common sense. I, I almost yeah. even have a feeling if 90% of the people who hate you just sat in a room and were able to sit with you like this, to be like, oh yeah, that makes sense. I get it. I think so too. They just, it's just hard. It's keyboards. It's click, yeah. click, click. Yeah. I, I never got to tell you this, but. I hate you. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was that was me that wrote you that nasty comment. comment. <laughs> yeah, I'm not really a big fan. No, um, you know, I, uh, I, when I first uh, heard about you was, was through Chris, and I didn't really know much about you, and I watched a couple of videos. I'm like, all right. There was one video that I watched that really kind of was like, this guy's legit. He's, he's genuine. And that was the video, and I, I don't remember the name of it or whatever. But you were just saying like how you started and I believe you were selling at like a thrift store or, or uh, some uh, pawn shop or something like that. Yeah. And you weren't doing well. Mm. And you were admitting that, that you were like, that you had failed. You felt like a failure. And it just made you like such, like almost like you're reaching out to people. Like you can get past that kind of stuff yeah. and, and just mm. grow yourself and, 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 and build to what you've, what you become. And I think, you know, that you just have like a very positive message and, and that, uh, you know, you should be proud of that. And, well, thank and, you, Lance. That means a lot. So you, went, you went from losing your job and being a failure to being hated on the internet. Yeah, nice. yeah. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Look at me now, Mom. <laughs> so, but, but I do have a question for, for you guys because all this talking of, again, I'm not a reseller, but... I have been thinking of dumping my collection. I probably won't. Oh, how much I, you want? I don't know. Yeah, 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 I I both of them. No, <laughs> you're out. Like you're a, out. I raised my hand this first. Like Let's a go. Six year conversation. Have you heard of my ad? ad. <laughs> but but we, in the thought process of it, I'm like, all right, I'm not going to get rid of everything. I'm going to keep the stuff that really means a lot to me, you know, which everybody probably Of says. course. So let's just say you're in that scenario, or, or maybe you have been in this scenario. What are like the three or five games that you're like, no way, I'm never gonna sell this. It has to be. It have to be a, a childhood. Like right now, right. I'm rebuilding my NES set. Just pick one. Strictly for the reason of getting my brothers here to play the way we just, used to. Just pick one. Not Thanks five. for keeping. I'd us probably on go track, River City Ransom. River City Ransom. I honestly might say Ribbit King. I wow. Bought you that. Oh. Oh, I mean so sentiment. Big. Yeah, no. that, that was in the history of the channel, just a, a good gift moment. That was a good. That moment. came at the right time, so that might be it for me. Awesome, dang! You guys are gamers. I just keep Magical Chase because it's, it's the most expensive. Let's go. I'm just a gamer. Did you did you have yours? <laughs> You'll hear from me in your comment section. <laughs> oh, I, I was I was just gonna choose uh, Roadkill just because I can never find it. So. Yeah. Was the thing like that's why I haven't sold mine because I haven't been able to decide what I'm gonna keep. I mean, like things like Super Metroid, like I, I could never. I would get probably rid of that. keep that. Yeah, yeah or so, 
Uh, like Symphony of the Night is actually one. Well, you know, it's funny that. though is when I was a kid, I did sell my Super Metroid. Ooh! And I bought about the cart like again, like I don't know, maybe like 15 years ago, and it's only recently like we got it back with the box. Send complete. me a picture. So. Yep. Hey guys, just just so you guys know, this is a free little plug for Caleb. Please check out his uh, One Up app. He does give fair prices. You can put your collection in, and yeah, just know that we love you. One you dash up dot app. Oh my you gosh, go. you guys already gave me the free sponsorship in the other episode. Hey, I, yeah, I'm but flattered. this is gonna be the first one that goes it. out. So. I've been using it for the NES Pursuit, and I have been <clears throat> very happy with it. Riff, you have not. Yes, Riff, Riff texts me like. Every single week, hey, this is broken, dude. Why that is this, is, this, that this is feature sucks? Bro, that's what you <laughs> want. That's what you yeah, want. I'm, no, it's actually been super helpful. Yeah. I do, I do appreciate it. But anyway, when that app comes out, guys, please go and it's download. Been out. It. Is it out? It's been. I mean, out. I, I know it's so on the website. I'm are. on the website one, but I don't know about the phone app one. It's that's on fine. there. One yeah, dash it's up on there. App. Although to clarify, it's really geared towards video game resellers specifically, not as much collectors. I, I like to say that because like we're not rolling out a lot of collector features in the next like year or so. And I'll I keep don't want, him, don't worry. I don't want people to hate me more. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs>